Hello my trash pandas and welcome back to the shop. On today's episode, five items you didn't know you could make good money scrapping. I don't know how to count, so there's probably more than five, and it would probably be more accurate to say five items that when I started I didn't know could be good money scrapping. A lot of you experienced scrappers will probably already know about these, but there's a point I'm seeking to make that I think you'll be able to appreciate. And at the end, we're going to go through an item I have never brought in for scrap, but I've collected a fair bit of and I think could be really good money, so I'm looking forward to finding out together with you guys. Without further ado, starting off our list, number one, aluminum siding. Yes, I know, big surprise, aluminum. Here's the thing, I overlooked aluminum siding a lot, and every time I'd find a couple small pieces, yeah, nothing to me. However, I've learned every time I've had the opportunity to pick up all of the aluminum from a, a roof being redone, I've been blown away by how quickly it adds up. Because that's what it comes down to, it's volume. And no, each individual piece doesn't weigh very much, but you could be surprised. What did we make recently? 150 bucks from one small job and it wasn't even all of the aluminum off of that thing? Aluminum siding, soffit, and drain pipe is surprisingly profitable if you focus on volume. Number two, and this was in a video not that long ago, cast iron pipe. Sewage pipe, drain pipe, water pipe. I was surprised to discover not the steel, because cast iron is actually worth less than, than other grades of steel, but the lead that is used to seal it. If you take the time and separate all of the lead, that is pure soft lead, you can melt it down and sell it to casters for two to almost five dollars a pound, depending on your area. I know that's not technically scrapping it, but there is a scrap metal that has more money than you might think in it. Item number three, and this is where my opinions about collecting steel started to change when I started picking these up, cast brake drums and brake rotors. I know, they're sort of unassuming, but the thing is, these are each worth between two and three dollars, each. And you never find them by themselves. You'll always find them in a pair or maybe four of them. So when you see brake drums and brake rotors, you're looking at five to ten dollars just sitting there waiting for someone to pick them up, and they are everywhere. If you see them, don't pass them by. That is easy money right there. Number four, and this may or may not apply to you, I had no idea this existed until one of you pointed it out to me. All of the steel that the copper is wrapped around in transformers and motors. That is a different and special kind of steel. It's high silica steel, and it is worth significantly more. The reason why it may not apply to everybody, it doesn't apply to me. I asked my steelyard and they don't have a buy price for it. But he confirmed that that is in fact the case. It is a higher value steel, so it depends on how much volume your yard processes and whether they actually collect it and separate it. It's worth asking because it's worth quite a bit more. And number five, I'm going to throw a few things all together into one category here, but let's start with steel auto rims. Yes, car rims, but not the aluminum ones, just the basic ugly steel ones that people put hubcaps on. Why? Because those go in as prepared steel. It's a higher grade based on the thickness of the steel and how clean it is. Because they go in as a higher grade, they're between two and four dollars each, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the same as the brake drums and brake rotors, they're so easy. They are easy, good money. So I wouldn't leave them lying around. Whether it's worth chopping a, a tire off of them, it depends on how long that takes you, I suppose. But just the bare rim, that's good money. Now, also in this category, I'm gonna talk about bed frames. You know those, those steel universal bed frames that you can adjust from like a, a single up to a queen size and just held together with bolts and usually have crappy wheels? Yes, those are also pretty thick and can go in as prepared steel. Now, this is something that you need to talk to your scrapyard about because mine only has one category for prepared steel, but I know some of them have several different grades of prep or prepared steel, and some places call it different things depending on the thickness. For me, the bed frames are just under what they would like to see in the prep category, but places that have multiple categories, they definitely go in under that. I know at my steel yard, those bed frames are just a little bit under what they'd like to see in the prepared category, but they are a higher grade than typical shred and worth selling separately. And for number six, told you I couldn't count. Washers, dryers, 
refrigerators, dishwashers, furnaces, hot water heaters, all of these appliances, I was surprised. When I started picking them up and hauling them in, not only do they fill the truck up easy and make you feel like you're actually getting somewhere, but they're worth between $10 and $20 each. 10 bucks, one item, 15, 20 dollars, one item, just one and done, keep going, next stop. You can't really beat that, and they're easy to see from a mile away. Plus, a lot of them have little copper add-ons. There'll always be like a power cord, or a, a washer or dryer will have a, a, a motor in it. Yes, those are nice, but don't get distracted. Those are just the sprinkles. Any experienced scrapper who makes a decent amount of money doing it sees that bin of wire as the little bonus at the end of the month. All of those motors, that's to get you through the winter when you're not really collecting a lot of other stuff. That's not where the money is. All right, I just had a sandwich. I didn't realize how badly I needed, and the hair's dry now, so. Swoop, that's better. Now, maybe you see the point I'm trying to get to already, and I don't want to spend too long on it, scare anyone away, or come across as too negative, but I feel a certain responsibility to make this point, because just the type of videos that I've been making and the, the type of audience that it caters to, I'm seeing a lot of people um, who are pretty new at the whole scrapping thing, just starting out, they're just cruising down alleys on a bike or with a backpack or with a pair of wire clippers, Someone's got to say something. Here's the thing. I started out that way too. But the money doesn't come from the little bits of brass and the handfuls of wire. The money comes from filling up on steel, bringing that in, going back out, and filling back up on steel. And when I started to figure that out, I went from making $300 a year in scrap to $300 a month in scrap immediately. If you're walking up and down the streets and alleys with a pair of wire clippers and cutting all of the cords off of all of the discarded appliances you can find, or plucking the top off of an aluminum barbecue, what you're essentially doing is, it's like going to a party and walking up to the food table and picking all of the strawberries off of the cake and taking a big swipe of icing with your finger and then moving on. No, you didn't technically take that much, but you kind of made the entire thing way less appealing for anybody else who might come along, right? Kind of the reason I'm always saying leave it better than you found it, because there's a right and a wrong way, and that is not leaving things better, that's just making things definitely worse. So if you're going to be out there scrapping, do it properly and make yourself some actual money. My mom recently uh, needed some help clearing, a, there was a space that just got covered in a bunch of junk from people who were living there and it was just a, a pile of trash and there were a few batteries and uh, aluminum wheels and whatever and she asked some of the neighbors to um if they needed anything or whatever and uh when she was when she was away for two days one of the people that she asked came along and <laughs> took off with all of the batteries and the rims now I get it. They look like they're they look like that's where the good money is, right? But <laughs> they took off with maybe $150 worth of batteries and rims and they left behind like $1200 worth of steel. There's like frames and axles and just just literal tons of steel there. So they cheated themselves out of it by trying to just cherry pick all of the best parts. But the truth is those are not the best parts, okay? That is not where a scrapper's money comes from. If you're looking at scrapping and you want to make some actual money, get a truck or a trailer or an SUV or something and focus on volume. Because the money comes from putting in the effort and moving the weight, not from the sparkles and the glitter. It took me a while to figure that out, but at this point, I think it's one of the most important pieces of knowledge I could possibly share. So I hope it reaches the people that need to hear this. These buckets of brass and copper and whatever else, they're fine, but they don't pay the bills. It's the furnaces and the water heaters and the, the dishwashers and all of the non-glamorous junk that actually makes you money. I don't think there's any other way I need to say it. Now let's, uh, let's move on to something interesting, huh? This is something I've been curious about for a while, and I can't wait to figure it out. It's these little buckets of treats right here. These things. 
So these are all different kinds of heating elements. I'm sure you'll recognize these. You know, out of stoves and ovens. Now I have spoken to my friend at the scrapyard about these, and um, some of them are definitely better than others, but I'm really curious to see if any of them are worth good money. Because I did have them, because these ones, I did have them shoot these with the XLR, and these came out as very high nickel content. Uh, these ones, I believe, are mostly just stainless steel, and then they have some sort of a, um, like the rod that runs through them is supposed to be something different. But I want to know what. And as you can see, over time I've collected quite a few different styles. So these are all the ones that I believe to be high nickel. So these ones, these came from um, little little boilers, little small style water heaters, and uh, this one as well. And then there's obviously the ones off of stoves and ovens. And then these things actually came out of um, uh, laboratory instruments. So since they're just the heating element itself, I'm really curious to see what those are made out of. So let me separate and categorize what we're looking at here, because I can't wait to see if there's any surprises. All right, four different types. One, two, three, four, five, six, a bunch of different types. Let's go see if there's any money in these or if they really are just unremarkable, dirty stainless steel. Well, I guess you could say that was a surprise. <laughs> Um, I didn't get the boss man and uh, the guy I did get did not even feel like hitting anything with the XRF analyzer. So I got light, dirty, stainless for everything, which I don't think is inaccurate. That's probably what would happen to pretty much anybody who went to the scrapyard with that mixed pile. Uh, so light, dirty, stainless was 27 cents a pound. So I got a total of $3.78. I did learn that the the little, the flat ones, those were actually a really high tin content. At least that's what he guessed without actually hitting it with the gun. Um, but those were really light and didn't even register on the scale, so whatever. The swing and a miss, that happens sometimes. But on the next episode, we're going to go through all of the items that I never bother scrapping and we're going to check just to see if i'm missing out on anything so subscribe so you don't miss that one thanks for the likes and the comments leave it better than you found it keep doing the thing